Bunch of crunch on me. Where you at your motivation guy? That's right. I am back. The one and only Keith Allen. I'm here to tell you right now, do not let the negativity stop you. Listen, if you're feeling discouraged right now or disappointed, or you're feeling, you know, you're going through any type of rejection or just any, you know, failures or hard times in your life. I'm here to motivate you to be great, to keep your head up and keep being positive because this moment that you're going through is just going to make you stronger. Trust me, if anyone knows about that, I do. Okay, so keep your head up and keep going. I'm going to tell you this right now. The clock is ticking and the chapter is quickly coming to an end. You know, any day now, the cute queen is going to unleash her wrath and take the island with her. And so we're here at Pro Guys. We're hardworking, man, trying to get you guys ready for the new chapter. So for this next video, we want to let you know about a few skills that you need to start working on right away if you want to hit the ground running. You know, aiming is probably the most important mechanic that you need to master if you guys want to be a good Fortnite pro. You know, there's no question about it, man. Like, you can build as much as you want and even come out with some pretty just amazing stunts. But if your aim sucks, man, then there's not really much that you can do once you enter the big leagues. You know, the players that you're going to encounter in competitive are just going to be highly skilled in accuracy and builds. So you need to make sure that your skills are on the same level, man. And so if you want to perfect your aim, okay, there are a few ways you got to do so. The first is to practice your 1v1s and, you know, you're going to want to do this on creative you know fights and battle royale don't always happen as often as you want them and you know having to start over can really lose you some momentum so keep in mind you know this isn't just target practice like your opponent is also going to be fighting back and moving around trying to dodge your attacks so while you're at it all right just try working on reading your opponents and just getting a good reaction time next you want to make sure that you get that real time experience i mean after all if you just 1v1 a player in a close range match you may be training your close range aim but you still need that long range boost you know mastering long-range weaponry and just hitting players from afar is a great way to get some tags on players when they least expect it you know if pulled off correctly you can gain an advantage before the fight even starts if done incorrectly you're gonna miss the shot alert your opponent and now you're gonna have to deal with the possibility of a healthy enemy whose head is completely in the game and so since each weapon plays differently the best way to really make sure that you're getting the best you know out of any weapon is really understanding the difference between hit scan and projectile weapons with the current loophole of chapter 3 unknown like you should master the basics so you can just be prepared for anything guys you know hit scan weapons such as the assault rifle and submachine guns are examples of weapons that don't require you to take range into account here and I mean like right here like you simply move the crosshair over the enemy and fire okay so we've seen many weapons over the past chapter which have included snipers and bows and crossbows and harpoons these weapons are all examples of projectile weapons so you know you always need to calculate how far your opponent is and whether or not they're moving in order to really hit them correctly distance will be determined you know if you need to just aim just a bit higher so the bullets hit them where you want it movement is definitely going to determine where you fire like if an opponent is running, you want to make sure to aim where they're just going to be rather than where they currently are. So if you're interested in professional grade coaching, then visit ProGuides.com. You can do this by clicking on the link below. The coaches here at ProGuides, I'm telling you right now, they can help you identify where you need to improve and just guide you no matter what skill level that you come in with. So I guarantee you guys you're going to see the improvement, I'm telling you. Okay, so another skill that you should definitely be working on is building skills. Okay, so while the advice sounds kind of obvious, like if you're thinking about going pro this chapter, there are some specific points that that you're gonna need to address. You know, peace control edits and box finding, it's gonna carry on into chapter three. So while they might add some new mechanics for builds or, you know, even some new trap items, knowing your fundamentals, guys, is gonna make it so you can focus more on the new content and less on skills. And so you should definitely have to grasp that by now. If not, don't worry about it. Everyone starts somewhere. So don't be hard on yourself. Okay, so one key aspect that binds all three of these skills together is timing. <laughs> Like if you have terrible timing, then you aren't going to be able to edit your bills correctly. In addition, you might also see yourself, you know, just failing to claim walls or because your opponent is just more prepared to defend it than you are to really make it push forward. Right. So one of the biggest mistakes that can throw off your timing is being too eager to pull off a build and man, just missing your mark entirely. So avoid hesitation and avoid eagerness. I'm telling you right now, it could lead you to elimination every single game. Instead, you know, know how to use an edit or a build so you can just also know when the best time to use it's gonna be the key to mastering this is knowing what each edit does like if you're a new player then it could seem quite confusing to figure out like what each edit will transform your build into so while placing four basic builds can really be simple multiply each build by the number of possible edits and now you have even more to keep track of so the best solution for this guys is repetition <laughs> you know once you've got the muscle memory down for the individual build you could just start thinking of the final product as a whole you know what is this edit for are you trying to peak are you trying to create an escape opening are you trying to move up from 
inside a box during a fight. So by clumping these together, you can stay focused on these tasks and it leaves less to really guess, you know, what you want to create and just see it all function as a whole. So if you still need help improving your timing, also take into account if you're using competitive key binds. Having key binds that really help you reach certain functions faster can cut your reaction time by a significant amount. And so if you play on a controller, consider using paddles or, you know, playing claws since this is going to help, you know, prevent you from having too much delay between functions. If you use a mouse and keyboard, try finding a mouse that has side buttons, okay? You don't need to go crazy and have one with nine different buttons on the side, but even just having two extra is going to give you guys more freedom. All right, game sense. It's all about understanding the game as a whole player. A player with a good game sense, oh my goodness, has has so much depth and knowledge of just where everything is on the map, what items to really work with, and really can anticipate the kinds of strategies their opponents might try to implement throughout the match. A good game sense is vital towards becoming a better fighter and can really help you go super far. However, with the start of chapter three, there really is no telling what the island's gonna look like or even what mechanics are gonna be added. So having a good game sense, guys, at the start of chapter three, I'm telling you right now, it's gonna give you an advantage and it's definitely something that's gonna go along with just everything else you have to pick up. Luckily, there are still some aspects of the game that you can start tackling right away if you want to start seeing improvement prior to the launch of chapter three. For starters, I mean, you can keep up with the current meta. This means following pro players and just checking to see what kind of play styles they use. You know, what edits are currently trending? You know, what warm up sessions do they practice? You know, when chapter three finally launches, man, odds are no one is just going to be using the new mechanics right away. It's going to take some time, right? Especially to adjust and create new strategies. In the meantime, though, uh, you know, we, we can't expect to see players using the same strategies from our current season while they adjust. So one essential skill that you should be paying attention to is your fighting skills, guys. This doesn't mean just having, you know, just good aiming or good building. It means combining these two separate skill sets and just using them to dominate your opponents. So as we mentioned before, 1v1s are a great way of just really training your aim. Like it could also be a good way of experiencing fights quickly rather than just waiting to encounter them in the wild. But I will say this, you're going to need to do more than just 1v1s if you guys want to be great fighters. Like you also have to be smarter in your plays. And so that means taking the building skills that we talked about earlier and implement them into your battles. So there are so many ways to use builds to your advantage. Like you can use them to disrupt the flow of someone else's builds or even trap them under a cone where they can build or move around making them easy targets, all right? We mentioned how, you know, timing can affect a skill such as peace control. For fighting, like your peace control skills will allow you to control the battlefield where you can engage an opponent and so if you want to improve your peace control then you gotta consider the following start off by trying to box your opponent all right if you can do this during a fight then you understand the fundamentals of peace control that is to limit your opponent's movement and so once you've mastered that simple trick then you can move on to more complex techniques which will sometimes fit different situations and so if you're looking for an interesting training routine to truly train up your consistency then you gotta check out the skabak peace control map on creative this routine who it helped me so much and it's definitely gonna provide you with various peace control scenarios that you might encounter in a match and so while this isn't you know the same as fighting in a real you know uh game i get it uh it could definitely help you make your peace control moves way more consistent but remember consistency is the groundwork for mastering the skill so you can just pull it off in the game and i'm telling you right now man you're going to be unstoppable against the players you encounter learning to vibe review is an important skill that you're going to need to really improve on to really help your mechanics like we've had a video before just going into a bit more detail about how to go about doing this for the current season but really the goal here to be to know what to spot and how to take in feedback from just looking at previous footage in other words what you need to learn to do is figure out what bits of information are going to help you out the most thus prioritize you know when you watch yourself in a vod review like what do you pay attention to the most your enemies your surrounding yourself you know if you're trying to fix your own flaws then the most important person on the screen is you yeah I'm talking to you even if your opponent has better skills and you want to see their decision making against yours ultimately man the person that got caught off guard was you so don't ask what your opponent did right First, focus on what you did wrong. And from there, you can start patching up your mistakes and specifically just trying whatever maneuver you still have trouble with getting right. If you want to get a better idea of what a good vibe review really looks like in action, okay, just look up pro players vibe reviewing themselves. There you get a good peek at how detailed the reviews are, but also watch as they just catch their own mistakes and address them. Sometimes the best way to really learn is really through demonstration. So the good thing about vibe reviewing as a skill set is even if the chapter changes, your ability 
to really tell the difference between important moments and the rest doesn't. Like this carries over. You know, if you still need help finding your mistakes, you could also try consulting with the coaches here at Pro Guides. All right, guys, so the last skill that you need to practice before chapter three is your arena skills. Yeah, I said it. Okay, you know, it's often easy to forget how important arena is when you want to prepare for a new season. After all, like if the season is over, why should you keep grinding arena? I get it. Well, the truth is, man, like you want to be able to stay in that competitive mindset. And so with competitions winding down to the next season, this is the place to do just that. You know, no matter which bracket you're currently in, like you're going to want to expose opponents who are around the same skill level as you. Once chapter three drops, the first First thing on people's minds is going to be to get to Champions League as quick as possible. You know, another reason that you should train in arena is to let your new skills settle in. Remember guys, creative has some differences, but you know, this is why, you know, creative warriors tend to really falter when they try to use those same skills in a match or a battle. Like you don't want to just start chapter three, just trying to make the transfer. Like instead, take a preemptive strike, right? Train those skills and then start playing arena so you can adjust to the change in the FPS and ping. Remember guys, the purpose of training now is so that you can focus on the training the new mechanics for chapter three, which is going to take more time than normal since odds are most pros and content creators alike are still going to be trying to figure out the best way to do so at the start of the competitive season. But you could tell me that's going to be a for today's video i just want to let you know man i'm so proud of you guys each and every one of you keep working hard keep grinding keep dreaming man keep believing what's in your heart and i'm telling you one day you're gonna make yourself proud and you know you're gonna surprise a lot of people hope you guys like the video make sure you like subscribe to the channel connect with me on my instagram at your motivation guy we'll see you on the next one peace